Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Karen Marie and today is a very exciting day for me because it is the reveal day for <laughs> the Sew so Jeans With Us challenge that I've been running together with the lovely Rachel from the French Seams. So <laughs> today's the day and I'm going to show you my new pair of jeans and all about making them. <laughs> So just a couple of things before we get started. Um, the lighting in my house today is totally mad. And this is kind of the, the third or fourth place that I've been sitting down trying to film this video. And you yeah, know, I keep having to restart because there's something mad with the light. So apologies for that. <laughs> I really wanted to have like the perfect lighting for my reveal, but you know, there it is. I also had to sit down in my living room with my daughter gaming in the next room. So <laughs> if you can hear cheering or, or, you know, outbursts from the next room, that's her. Everything is okay. She's just gaming. <laughs> Family life, you know, uh, that's the way it is. The other thing I wanted to say is that this video is probably going to be a little bit longer than my usual videos. And that's because there are quite a few things that I want to talk to you about concerning this little challenge that we've been running. And uh, yeah, I hope you've settled in with a good cup of tea or whatever your preferred beverage is <laughs> and that you're ready um, to hear more about how we've been getting on with our jeans. Um, so Rachel and I are going to post uh, our video on the same day. So if you are coming over to my channel from Rachel's, hello and welcome. <laughs> if you haven't seen Rachel's yet, please do hop over to her channel after this and watch her video too, because this has been such a joy um, and such a fun challenge. And it's my first ever collaboration with another sewist. So yay <laughs> hoping there will be many many more because this is so much fun okay um i have some notes down here so i hope you do excuse me uh when i look down it's just because i really want to get all the details <laughs> included in this video all right um i'm going to put chapters in by the way um just to make it easier for you to navigate the video. So if I'm talking about something that um, you are not as interested in, you can just skip ahead. Um, and I will be making some notes about sizing and everything. And I know that can be a bit triggering for some people. It can sometimes trigger me a little bit when I watch other people's videos too, but I'll give fair warning so that you can just skip ahead if, if that's not for you. Um, okay, so Rachel and I came into this collaboration from quite different angles. So Rachel um, wanted to make her first pair of jeans ever. <laughs> and I have made quite a few jeans um, over, the, over the past few years, um, but I wanted to perfect the fit on mine. So the Megan Nielsen Ash jeans is the one that we've both been making throughout this collaboration. And um, the Ash jeans fit me quite well straight out of the packet, but not perfectly. So I have been really excited to work on, on uh, the fit a little bit more. I've been looking at a lot of different resources and I've been, you know, watching videos about fitting jeans <laughs> and stuff like that. And I've really learned a lot from that too. So yeah, I, I'm i really excited to talk to you about um, this journey. I'm not going to make a full like pattern review of the jeans pattern because the Megan Nielsen Ash jeans is an older pattern. It's been out for quite a while now and other people have gone into a lot of depth when it comes to pattern reviewing this pattern. Um, I will link um, the um, So So Live channel under here underneath in the description box. And that is a channel that's run by Ceremi. Um, 
and she has made like a really thorough pattern review and she also has a, a sort of sew along on her <laughs> on her channel she's live sewing the ash jeans and that helped me a lot when i sewed up my first pair of ash jeans a long time ago so i'm going to link her channel so feel free to pop over to her channel afterwards and have a look at the pattern review and or the live sewing <laughs> of the ash jeans um i will however talk to you about fabric just a little bit um i'll also link some resources to that um and um most of the time i will be talking to you about the fit adjustments that i made and the sort of progress that i've made in fitting these jeans so <laughs> talking a mile a minute <laughs> sorry about that um okay so um let's start with fabric shall we <laughs> um this is really tricky because I have been making, as I said, quite a few um, jeans. <clears throat> I love making jeans. <laughs> um, and there are so many exciting patterns, so I'm not going to stop <laughs> making jeans anytime soon. But it is quite difficult to find the right um, denim. The Stitch Sisters did a really thorough video series about um, that making um, making jeans. I think that was a couple of years ago, maybe. And I'll also be linking their the video or their channel below. Um, but the thing that I found really interesting is that they have like a whole video on choosing fabric. And it's really tricky. Um, I live in Norway and we have quite a few like online stores and brick and mortar stores as well. Um, but it is quite limited when it comes to stretch denim fabric, like really good quality stretch denim. <laughs> um, that's, you know, of, of, the, of a good weight. The weight is really important. Uh, for, for me, it is really important to have like a heavier weight denim when I'm making jeans, like fitted jeans. Because if it's a sort of a wide leg jean, you can sort of get away with a lighter uh, weight denim because, you know, you that's probably a better idea anyway, because if it's going to be very wide leg, it's going to be very heavy if it's a good weight denim so yeah i've been making like dawn jeans in a, a lighter weight but when it comes to the ash or you know ginger jeans from closet core or, or stuff like that um i need a denim that's at least 10 ounces and that's at least i would prefer it if it if like all of my denim stretch denims were like 14 ounces because I like that really heavy structured good quality denim um and it's not really easy to get hold of here I mean the self-made has denim that's 10 and a half ounces um that has stretch in it and that's what I used for my first pair um in, in this challenge. <laughs> so I made this as a sort of toile. Oh, I'm fiddling here, sorry. Um, and these, they need an iron. I can see that now. But uh, these are the toiles that I made. And I made these um, in the 10 and a half ounces stretch denim with 2% elastane and 98% cotton from Self Made. Um, and um, this is a denim that I've used many times before because it has been like the best denim I have easy access to. Of course, I can order from like, I don't know, Minerva and, and other like international stores, but the, <laughs> the postage and the import taxes and, you know, all of that jazz makes it quite... expensive really expensive so uh, it's not always easy to get hold of 
And what I did for the final pair, which I have here, <laughs> sneak peek, <laughs> is that I am also going to enter these final pairs of jeans that you're going to see in a minute. I'm going to post those as part of the Precious Fabric 24 challenge that is run by Whitney at um, Tomcat Stitchery. I've had this piece of denim lying in my stash for a year <laughs> because I bought this um, at a sewing festival called Fabrikstad here in Norway. It's the only sewing festival I know of um, in Norway. <laughs> and I bought this as a dead stock from a Norwegian company called Livid that makes really high quality jeans. And they had a little bit of dead stock that was being sold at that festival. Still really expensive, so I didn't buy a lot. <laughs> In fact, I could barely squeeze these out. I wouldn't have had enough if I'd made the wide leg um, ash because then I couldn't fit as many, you know, side by side on the <laughs> fabric. So um, these are but these are the most expensive home sewn jeans I've ever made. And it is really high quality denim. I think it's about 14 ounces and it has 2% stretch. And it's Japanese denim, which we all know is the best. <laughs> um, and when Whitney launched her brilliant um, challenge, I decided to go for it. So... <laughs> that was so scary cutting into this but here they are I thought I'll just show them to you first and then I'll pop them on so that you can have a better look at them um but it's easier to show them <laughs> this way yeah um it's it's a really high quality denim and these jeans fit me completely different than the twirl that I made even though it's the same size, it's the same pattern, it's even the same variant. So these are also the slim jeans version. Completely different look. <laughs> At least they feel completely different. So <laughs> the fabric really matters. If you're going to sew your own pair of denims, jeans, which I highly encourage you to do, look for the good denim. <laughs> okay. I'll spend the next couple of minutes talking about size and shape. So if this is something that triggers you or if you're not interested, please move ahead to the next chapter. Okay, that was the fair warning. So <laughs> I'm pear shaped um, and there is a 10 inch difference between my hips and my waist, which can sometimes lead to difficulties when I buy ready-to-wear jeans. <laughs> um, so it, it's really, really difficult to get something of a high quality that actually fits both my waist and my hip. And I also have a bit of a sway back thing. Um, and a bit of a mum tum too, because, you know, <laughs> in my 40s now. Um, I sewed up the size 35 in the Megan Nielsen Ash jeans and that's because um, they are like sized differently so I think they they use the size of your waist and then they call that the size if you know what I mean so it's not like a size 14 16 it's not like that they they actually choose the inches around your waist and they call that the size so for my part it's the a size 35 and that's because my waist is between 34 and 35 as as you know most of the time um uh, but i did use a little bit of a, a a little deeper seam allowance um just to sort of make them fit a little bit better and that's what i learned in my foot from the toile that they were a little loose on the waist so i took it took a little bit of a deeper seam allowance to make them fit. Okay, <laughs> now um, about cutting out. 
Um, I The first few pairs of jeans that I made, um, I wasn't aware of the difficulty about cutting out. So I cut on the double layer and then ended up with a twisted leg. So that was something that I learned much later that you always cut your jeans on a single layer. And then, so you can, if you have the right side up for the fabric, you can place your, for instance, your back piece on the face up. And when you're cutting out the mirrored pattern piece for the other side, <laughs> you not only flip the pattern piece itself, but you also rotate it 180 degrees so that you don't end up with a twisted leg. And this is because um, denims are, you know, woven on the diagonal, so <laughs> sort of the classic twill weave. And that means that you should cut them out like 180 degrees so that you balance that off. There is actually a good explanation on this on the Closet Core uh, blog when they talk about cutting out the ginger jeans and it's the same thing. So I would encourage you to go and read that too. <laughs> so let's talk about the uh, adjustments that I've made to the fit of my jeans. Um, first of all, I decided when I made up the toile of my jeans that I wanted to take like a deeper scoop in the back. And that's because even though the ash jeans fit me quite well, I've had the issue of some like wrinkles underneath the cheek. <laughs> um, and I didn't want that. So I figured out after watching quite a few videos and looking up a lot of resources online about this, it turned out that I might just have a little, I need a little more room in the seat. And what I did, I didn't cut it. I just sewed a deep, I took a deeper seam allowance in the scoop in the back just to have a little more room for my bottom. <laughs> and um, once you do that, they tell you to add on what you removed from the seat to the side seams because you don't want your jeans to be smaller. You just want to have more room in the seat. Um, and for my toile, that's what I did. And I did add on on the side seams. However, it turned out I don't really need that. <laughs> so for this pair, I still scooped out just a little bit underneath uh, the, the buttocks, <laughs> you know, in the, in the seat. And then I didn't add on anything to the side seams. And that was a big improvement. I do think that. So that is something that I'm going to be testing out for all my jeans in the future because it fits me better and there's less wrinkling <laughs> on the back. So that worked out really, really well. Um, and um, one of the other things that I've been doing is that I use, when I sew up the Megan Nielsen Ash jeans, I use a different technique to um, sew the zipper in the front. And that's because there is a tendency to have the zipper, it's it's poking out just a little bit. And that's just, that's not just me because a lot of uh, people have said that about the Megan Nielsen Ash. So I think the, the fly doesn't really cover the entire zip as well as it could. So I use a different method to sewing in the zip um, that gives me a little bit more coverage for the zip. And I did that with both of these. Um, uh, another thing that I did for the final pair is that I moved the back pockets down quite a bit. And that's because I find that the uh, pockets on the ash jeans are too high. Um, so you can see the light is really disappearing now. Sorry. So as you can see here, the the pockets go straight up to the yoke, almost like one finger <laughs> between. And I don't find that terribly flattering. So I have moved them down like a good couple of centimeters and this works out so so much better 
I also increased the size just by this much to the pocket. So they're a little bit bigger than the original. The main difference that I used for my final pair was the pockets on the front. Now I have made the Closet Core Ginger Jeans um, before and I find that I massively prefer that pocket. <laughs> so i'm um I'll, I'll turn them inside out so you can see the difference the closet core ginger jeans uses a pocket that stretches from the side seam and all the way into the actual zip so it's sewn into the zip which kind of creates a pocket stay so it keeps you know it it's not a hold-in or anything like that, but it's just, you know, your, your tummy feels really secure and, you know, in place <laughs> with this version. So as you can see, I just used the pockets from the Ginger Jeans, the pocket pattern piece, and then I adjusted the opening um, in the front for, for that pocket piece so that it would fit into the curve of the front <laughs> of the ash jeans. So I just used a very lightweight like viscose here because I didn't want it to be like full on cotton with no stretch because that would feel very uncomfortable when I've sewn it into the zip. So the pockets here are lighter but they feel so much better. <laughs> the um turn the other one out too so you can see on the inside of that so this is the this is the original pocket that goes with the ash jean so that's just one pocket piece that you sort of sew in fold back and then fold in half so you can see this does not go all the way into the zip this pocket is deeper but it doesn't run this way <laughs> And I really do prefer this version um, that's shallower, but it moves all the way in here. So that it sort of holds me in just a little bit, or it just doesn't really hold me in, but it feels very stable and secure, if you know what I mean. Um, and I'm going to do that with all <laughs> my jeans um, from now on, I think, because I really do just prefer that. On my final pair, I also used a like silver gray top stitching thread and <laughs> boy do I regret that decision oh uh, every single mistake and wonky line shows up like nobody's business because oh it's so visible on the dark denim and even though I try to be careful, <laughs> I've made mistakes. Yes, yes, I have a lot of them. Still, you know, trying not to be a perfectionist. Um, and <laughs> I made a slight mistake uh, here and then I sort of had to do something to cover it up and then that became bum art, as Rachel called it. <laughs> And I am probably going to fix this somehow because, you know, it looks like an arrow that's pointing away from my bottom and that's not, you know, perhaps ideal, but there it is. Uh, <laughs> um, so, but still, I mean, I can like fix it with some clever like sashiko uh, embroidery or something. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet, but okay. So, final thoughts before I lose the light completely. <laughs> this is my favorite pair of jeans so far. It absolutely is. Mistakes are made, not going to lie, but I still love them. And the main reason why I love them is because of the denim. So sturdy, so high quality, I'm going to invest in more of this denim you know, from now on. They have a little bit of a um, leftover <laughs> stock at uh, the girls that call themselves Fabric. Um, <laughs> and I'm probably going to invest in that because I need more of this denim in my life. 
I also included a little label uh, that's from Cozy Club Handmade and I forgot to put it in while I was sewing and I just remembered in time to put it in there instead. <laughs> and I put a little like um, faux leather patch on the back and this is from the Specky Seamstress. I don't think you can see it but made by me. Um, <laughs> So this is really a proper pair of denims and denim jeans. And yeah, my best pair yet. <laughs> um, so I am going to show you a little bit, um, if I haven't already, I'm going to show you a little prancing video of me in them. Um, and uh, I'm going to pop them on so that you can see what they look like. And I also made a little shirt, so I'm going to put that on too. See you in a minute. Okay, so I'm really losing the light now. So I had to put the <laughs> my living room lights on and everything, which makes it look a little bit weird, but you know, there it is. So uh, in my last video, I did tell you that I wanted to sew up the Vivian Shao Chen's um, Nepheline blouse. <laughs> me and Lil stood there, um, in an Indian block print that I got uh, from Rainbow Fabrics. And here she is. <laughs> I love these little tucks on the sleeves and everything. So, yeah. And then I got to show you those too. But this is about jeans. So <laughs> let me show you what they look like. Um, so as you can see, it's probably, it's a little difficult here, but I'll, I'll stand in my sofa. Um, so as you can see, I have no like weird wrinkles or anything in the front. Um, they fit me quite like tightly and snugly over the hips. Um, and um, yeah, I haven't got any of these like really weird wrinkles here now. Um, and uh, yeah, I really do think the pockets look better <laughs> uh, when they're a little further down the jeans. Um, yeah, I forgot to say that the, the little like wrinkly parts that I had on my twill is not present here. So I'm really happy with my new jeans and I can't wait to start wearing them. <laughs> and now that I have shown you, um, revealed my final pair, I can actually start wearing them. So I can't wait. <laughs> so final thoughts, yeah? Um, had a lot of fun. I learned quite a bit about fit and everything because I had to look into so many resources to kind of figure out what the problem with the wrinkles in the back was and everything. So yeah, I've learned a lot. <laughs> it's been so fun to collaborate with Rachel and I really do hope that I get to participate in more challenges and collaborations like this because it's been so, so much fun. <laughs> And I do hope that we have also tempted you to join in this challenge and get your own jeans sewn up. <laughs> and I cannot wait to hear what you have to say about this. So please do share your thoughts and comments, ideas, etc., with us on Instagram and in the comments below. Thank you so much for following me along here. You bring me so much joy. <laughs> Have a lovely weekend. Bye.